We go to my number 10 pass rusher in the 2021 NFL Draft, and it is Hamilton Rashad Jr. Um, this is a guy that uh, I watched, and I was really disappointed in his 2020 tape. Uh, for Hamilcar, um, he was really, really dominant in 2019. And that's an understatement. Like, one of the best in the nation, good, in 2019. And the encore and follow-up to that was so disappointing. And I just wanted to know what happened to Rashid Jr. Um, in his final year um, in Corvallis. Let's flip his card over, however, and um, talk about why he's probably going to go off the board in day number two of this draft. And so we take a look at his strengths. Uh, you start with his size, 6'3", 254 pounds for a guy that's more likely than not going to be a 3'4", um, outside linebacker. Um, he moves around really well. He's got great athleticism, tremendous acceleration. When he takes off, he gets there in a hurry. Um, he's got really good, solid uh, feel in space. He, he's a guy that's very comfortable um, in space. Look, I don't want him running with anybody's tight end. I don't want him running 15, 25 yards down the field. But um, in a limited capacity as an underneath defender, he's fine. Um, Stout at the point of attack does a good job of stacking, um, you know, blockers. I don't think he necessarily uh, does the best job of um, shedding those guys and getting to the ball carrier, but he does a good job of stacking defenders. When he's in 2019, he stacked and shed his ass off, okay, which is why his numbers were astronomical and through the roof. In 2020, he would stack, but he wasn't shedding. So I know he can stack and shed, which is why it's a strength. It wasn't consistent, though, especially in 2020. Um, he didn't look like the same player. He looked heavier to me. He looked less explosive and dynamic. The numbers suggest that. I was disappointed, needless to say. Beautiful crossover and swim move. Man, is that thing a thing of beauty, and it's his best move. It's the best thing he's got going when he's going after the quarterback because in 2019, when this guy had 14 sacks and led the nation with 22 and a half tackles for loss um he was damn near unblockable when he would put when he would bust out the, the crossover he they obviously they would move this guy around they would blitz him in the a gap they would blitz him in the b gap they would blitz him off the edge he would line up in a two-point stance he would line up in a three-point stance you didn't know if he was on the left side of the field if he was on the right side of the field they'd move him all around and rightfully so he was a playmaker but when he would rush inside against a guard they, they had no answers for him when he would fake outside, cross over inside, finish with the swim, and they were done. Cooked. So um, that's his go-to move, and it, it's a winner. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. High motor, always around the ball, and 2019's production, my goodness. That was some fun tape to watch. Uh, there were games where he was unblockable, and everywhere. And so I've already went through the numbers in 2022, but I'm going to do it again. 12 games, or excuse me, in 2019, 12 games, 22 and a half sack, uh, 22 and a half tackles for loss, excuse me, 14 sacks, two forced fumbles, three PBUs in that season. I mean, he was everywhere. Um, and it's that season that I believe is going to get him drafted. Um, in the third round. If you're going off the 2020 tape, he's a, a, a day three guy. But you go off the 20, 20, uh, 2019 tape, and he's a day two guy for sure. Uh, weaknesses. Needs, to re, uh, needs pass rush refinery. Uh, that goes without saying. Um, I would have loved to have seen him get better in that department. Like, I was looking for growth in 2020. I didn't see it. And he had his hand in the dirt more in 2020 than he did in 2019 and it, it just he was he didn't get any better at pass rushing it was the same thing it was the stale bull rush it wasn't what i was expecting to see from him in terms of growth which is why he had 14 sacks in 2019 and zero in 2020 in seven games and only two tackles for loss so 
Uh, you have to know how to use this guy. I don't think he was used correctly in 2020. Um, one of Another one of his weaknesses is sometimes he's more worried about doing his job instead of making plays. There's a, a place and a time for everything. There's a place when uh, and a time for you to just stand up that offensive lineman in that gap and be where you're supposed to be. That's called doing your job. There's another thing called making a play. The two can coexist. They can work in beautiful harmony with one another. You can stand up that guard and shed him and make a tackle. That's allowed. You can do that. You can see the running back coming your way and jump inside instead of, you know, sitting there and, and engaging with the tight end because, you know, you're supposed to be in this gap. No, you can jump inside and make the tackle. I think they would prefer you to do that. He struggles with doing his job versus, hey, let me go make a play. It reminds me of Perry Riley, once upon a time as a Washington football team linebacker, where he would go out of his way to run into a pulling guard because this is his gap. Instead of, hey, the ball carrier is going the opposite direction. Maybe you should go that way. Well, I have to be in my gap, so I'm going to go do my job. No, go make a play. Go make a tackle. He will jump around blocks, and he's sealed too easily at times. So there are times where instead of him taking on a defender, he will try to be quick and jump around the block, and he jumps outside of the play, and now there's an even bigger hole there. And you're like, look, dude, you can't do that. And that's why I said it's a fine line between doing your job and making a play, and he has to figure that out. And then there are too many times where he just gets sealed to the inside. I'm like, oh, dude, come on, no, that, that can't be your life. Like, that you can't allow the guard to come off a double team, seal you to the inside, and now there's a big gaping hole there. Like, like no, that that's too too easy. Can't have it. And then his 2020 season is off-putting for me. I don't think he was necessarily used in the right capacity. I think he gained a little bit of weight, and I don't think it was favorable for him. I, I would need to sit him down and talk about 2020 and, and why there was such a steep drop-off in production. He went from the best player on the field for the Oregon uh, State Beavers to a non-existent entity in 2020. How that happens in a span of one year is baffling. I need answers if I'm going to select you. And if I don't like your, your answers, I won't select you. So um, I, I think I know why. I think it was you know poor usage. And I think he tried to prove that he could be a little bit bigger and stouter and he put on some weight that probably wasn't in his best interest. Uh, nonetheless, my comp for him is Uchenna Nwosu, um, the USC outside backer that was taken by the um, then San Diego Chargers. They might have been Los Angeles by then. I think they were LA Chargers at that point. And uh, he's turned into a damn good defender in this league as a stand-up outside linebacker that can do a lot of things. He's very versatile. I think uh, Hamilcar uh, Rashid Jr. is the same thing. Um, a, a really versatile defender that can do a lot of things just needs to be in the right defense. So um, I see a lot of uh, Uchenna Nuosu in him, and I think he is a guy that, if put in a position, can do some of those things that Uchenna Nuosu has done in the league to this point. He's my number 10 edge rusher in this draft. Louis. Network.